Hello friends, when it comes to fake or chop, the more the merrier and if you are able to create 8 fragments during a hard cataract fake or chop, then you're going to be able to mobilize these pieces more easily and end up with much clearer corneas. Now this is a patient with an extremely hard, a grade 5 to 6 nucleus sclerotic cataract as you can see from the red glow itself. So I create the incision and a small opening in the anterior capsule in order to create the capsulorexis. A little amount of 1% xylocaine has been instilled into the anterior chamber. I don't stain the capsule because of the good red glow that I get in spite of this being a very hard cataract. The important thing to accomplish while performing capsulorexis is that you get an adequately sized rexis. Now this should be slightly more than 5.5 millimeters because the nuclear substance is much larger not only in the anterior posterior depth but also in the equatorial diameter of the nucleus and therefore the fragments that you create will be very large and for the mobilization would be easier if you had a larger capsular excess. With the help of a utrad of forceps, I have created the adequate size capsular excess, which I'm happy. The cortical cleavage hydro dissection is done by injecting very small amounts of fluid in multiple locations, and this is usually enough. It's much easier to achieve nucleus rotation and completion of cortical cleavage hydro dissection in harder cataracts than it is in a grade 2 or a grade 1 nucleus sclerotic cataract. Now let's observe how I perform the phaco emulsification. This is being done in a multiburst mode. I'm using a power of 40% in this patient. So I bury the phaco tip inside the nuclear substance and I create the first chop. FACO probe is buried deeper into the meat of the nucleus and using the second instrument I am able to take it deep into the crack and create the chop. I then proceed to create the other fragments. I initiate the chop and then I create the separation and while you create the separation remember it is very important to make sure that this fragment separation has gone through and through and you don't have any small attachment in the posterior base plate. If you have an attachment while you try to mobilize the nucleus fragment the entire remaining portion of the nucleus will follow behind it and this will create a problem. This is the first fragment that I'm removing. Well, the model of this story is to create small fragments. Now, normally we create four fragments, whether it is the divide and conquer, or the stop and chop. We always start to create four fragments. While that is okay in a grade 2 nucleus sclerotic cataract, remember that the harder the cataract grade, the smaller should be the fragments because the nucleus substance is much larger. Even if you create small size fragments, the entire mass will now be equal when you create four fragments in a grade 2 nucleus sclerotic cataract. So you reduce the mass that has to be emulsified, use mechanical forces to create the fragments. Therefore, you will not be using the ultrasonic power while creating the fragments. So while the power is consumed only while removing the fragments, a smaller fragment will enable you to use more vacuum and lesser phaco energy in order to evacuate it. Each of the four quadrants that you create is then broken up further into smaller pieces. So you downsize each of the four fragments into smaller fragments. Create the fragment then make sure that you have achieved the lateral separation and then this piece is free from the surrounding nucleus and only when the nucleus is completely free you mobilize and then you address this fragment alone one at a time. This will ensure that you don't have a lot of flying fragment pieces in the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber will be clear and it will be free of small flying shrapnel of nuclear fragments. Phaco emulsification then continues each of the four fragments that I have created, I further downsize into two more fragments. So totally we get about eight fragments. Creating the smaller fragments is now going to give you a greater control over phaco emulsification. So you won't have large pieces getting prolapsed, completely obscuring the view. Making these smaller fragments is now going to ensure that the view of the remaining part of the nucleus is extremely clear and you know exactly what you're doing at every step 
and every stage of the procedure. The most important thing that you achieve in creating the smaller fragments is that it helps in better mobilization of nuclear fragments, a cleaner anterior segment, lesser flying fragments that can hit against the corneal endothelium and create the damage and therefore you will end up with much much clearer corneas on the post-operative day. Unless you try this out, you will not simply believe the type of clarity that you can get. In this patient with a grade 5 nucleosclerotic cataract, I have not even used a dispersive viscoelastic like viscote. I am just using 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and this is adequate to protect the endothelium. Please try to create smaller size fragments when you are handling larger grades of cataract. The rule of thumb could be that for a grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract, you can create 4 fragments maybe for grade 3, 6 and a very hard cataract, you create about 8 fragments. If you do that, you will end up with clearer corneas and thank you for your attention.